Hello and good evening everyone. Welcome back to my Mental Health and Crime channel. My name is Huda London. I'm a licensed cognitive behavior therapist and a licensed mental health counselor. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy the contents in this channel. Sorry, I was just drinking my coffee. I'm wishing everyone a pleasant weekend wherever you all are. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for all the support, for all the kindness, for all the mindfulness that I get on this channel. I would like today to talk about the case of Summer Wells, Summer Moon to Wells. The picture I just showed you was the latest picture of Candice Bly Wells. She was supposed to be in a church or some kind of church celebration in Johnson, Tennessee. This was, I think, two weeks ago. Jonathan Lee Richards took that picture. So Candace looks like she's a bit isolated, I believe, or a bit alone. She's alone in the picture. Her clothes looked a bit too big for her, I would say. I'm sorry to say, but that's the truth. So let me uh, start, the, start the clip by explaining and summarizing what happened on the day Summer was reported missing. Summer is a five, year, five and a half year old girl when she was reported missing. Summer, Summer was last seen with her mother or by her mother Candice Bly and her brothers, her three brothers all, all under the age of 13 and her grandmother Candy Hedo, AKA Grandis although she doesn't like to be called a grandis, on the 15th of June, 2021, around 6.30 in the evening, Tennessee local time, law enforcement was called to Ben Hill Road. That's where Candace, Dawn, Summer, and the three boys live. Summer was reported missing by her mother. The mother said she, lo she last saw Summer in the basement. She went down to play with her toys with her and her, her brothers were the last one to see her because they were up in the sitting room, allegedly according to Candice. Candice said that after five minutes, at times she says five minutes, at times she says two minutes, at times she says it could have been 10 minutes or 20 minutes. We don't know the timeline because there's a lot of gap, there's a lot of lies, but Summer, his mother said that she went down to the basement, she called for Summer, she asked the boys if they've seen Summer, and they said Summer's down in the basement. She said, I called Summer, and Summer did not reply back, and it wasn't like Summer. So I went down to the basement, and she was gone. That was the exact words. Law enforcement came. They did a thorough, thorough check around the neighborhood, around the creek, in the property, outside the property of the wells, Candice Bly was trying to call Robin from the church. She couldn't get hold of Robin, so she called David Dotson, who Dotson was a member of the church. He moved, I believe, to Ohio, but he came three months before that. He moved to Tennessee from March to the fifth of chill until two weeks after summer was missing. Uh, David Dodson said that when he came, the boys clearly told him that the basement door was not locked. And uh, he said that Candice Bly, the mother, told him, she showed him some pictures and she said of the three boys and Summer, and she said that we, uh, she took the boys and Summer for swimming. But according to Candice, with the Chris McDonough's interview, from the interview room, Candice said that she called out for Summer from the basement. She couldn't find Summer. She went down and Summer was gone. That is what's written on the TBI website. But the TBI got into the picture the next day and they raised the alert from an endangerment alert to an amber alert. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigations usually work with cases like foul play, they work with human trafficking, they work with uh, gang-related crimes, gang-organized crimes. Uh, 
On the Amber Alert that was issued by the TBI, it stated that Summer was last seen in front of a house, but Candy said Summer was last seen in the basement. The timeline that Candice gave us, she said in the morning her mother's uh, knee was aching, it was inflammated, so she took her down to the doctor at 8 a.m. on the morning, and that was on the 15th of June. The grandmother had a brace, a brace, a brace knee on, a brace hit on her knee. Uh, the grandmother got an uh, injection, I'm sure, steroids or something for the knee because she was in serious pain, and she got a prescription. Uh, Candy said that uh, Hunter called her, that's a 15-year-old boy that is the son of, a, of her alleged best friend, Alison Harris. Candice said that she went and picked up Hunter. Hunter asked his mother if he could go outside. He was bored at home. Hunter has uh, impulsive ADHD mental illness. And she went and she picked him up. She went and picked up the grandmother. They went to the drive through put in the prescription, and then they went swimming in the horse pond that is not too far away from the center and from, so that they could get their medication. They just went down to swim. At the start, it was said that Can Candice was supposed to take summer fishing, but it was strange they didn't have any fishing rod with them. And summer did not have a swimming suit. She just had a little top underneath. So Candice let her swim, according to Candice. And, and then she said, after we finished in the swimming hole, the horse pond, we drove back, we stopped at a couple of stops to get uh, vapors, different kind of flavors of vapor, and then they went to get some, uh, what's it called, slush, was it? Yeah, they went to get some slush and after that, some drinks, so cold drinks, and then after that, there was no food that they stopped by in the way, which we which we find of Candice find we found it kind of strange. Um, Candice said that she drove Hunter at home to his house at two thirty, and she said she went home and Summer was last seen in the basement. We do not know which part and which part of the timeline is false and which is true because there has been so much lies. There has been so many, so many, so many things that weren't right in this case. There was a lot of gap between the timeline between these, between when Summer went missing, that we say between 2.30 to 6.30. But we did see the summer sitting at the back of the car kneeling on the milk cartons and she seemed to have a bruise on her forehead she the picture did not look like summer was really well she looked quite unwell her fingers were purple underneath her fingers and her thighs seemed to be swollen um i personally believe that something already happened to summer and that they were trying to maybe she got her bump on her head and she fell so I think they thought of if they put ice like let us see on the milk cotton so she would get better but something must have happened and they got god forbid they went and hit summer got rid of summer uh Candice has never been honest about the subject Jody Subran the neighbor said she heard around 4 20 in the evening she heard doors slamming and she heard uh animal scream uh, so we don't actually know if anyone can be believed in the story because law enforcement does not believe Jody Sue is alibi or Jody, Bo Jody Sue's statement has anything to do with the disappearance of Summer. I find it strange that when the Amber Alert was put up on the 16th by the Tennessee Borough of Investigation. The Tennessee Body of Investigation said Summer was last seen outside the house barefoot. So that did not make sense to me either because Candy said she was last seen in the basement. For someone to have come to a property where there were three children that are not actually children, they were 13, 11 years old and nine years old sitting and playing games, I believe they would have definitely have seen 
the abductor because the abductor would have to pass by them. Candy said from uh, to David Dawson even that the door was closed, the basement door was locked. But later on she said it wasn't true. We found along the way that's, that Candice did not return, did not give her mobile in for investigation to law enforcement. So I think that is a big piece of the evidence that can be deleted. Don said he was at work. Don Wells, he said he found it strange that he was talking all the way to with Candice while she was searching for summer. And he said that is quite, quite kind of rare because usually the Wi-Fi doesn't work up in those places. So I wonder where Candice was, if she was really at home, or if she was somewhere else trying to get, God forbid, rid of summer. A lot of many searches has been conducted for many months. The TBI and the law enforcement, the sheriff was walking, working on this case. Don Wells managed to breach not breach his parole, but basically what he did is he was arrested for DUI, drinking under the influence. He was put, this happened in October. These were the period of times that Dawn and Candice would come drunk and fight and have domestic violence on live TV. That is one of the reasons I never believed that someone was abducted. These two parents look like they should go down for child negligence, child abuse, child endangerment. Whatever charges of cruelty to children should come down to these two parents. Everyone seems to be pointing the finger on each other, but we don't know till up to today who's to blame. Uh, Jody Sue Brown said a couple of months ago that she believes she knows that her boyfriend or father's children, Andy Bernard, used to sell Dawn Wells drugs, and Dawn used to give it to Candice to sedate to sedate sedate the children so we don't know if a possible OD happened then I personally have the snake theory that because Candice has a snake tattoo on her, on her hand on her wrist basically with a black cross and a snake wrapped on it I've been falling before she hasn't had that she started having it later they refused Don Wells refused and Candice Wells refused to show Chris McDonald, the shed. This is dangerous and they're tools and I, we don't let the children even in. What is strange is when Don came home, the first place he went to is the shed. So I wonder what happened in the shed. Then up to today, it's been over a year and a half, almost two years. There's no sign of summer. We don't see any justice being done for this baby girl. She deserves her justice. We can see that Candice has clearly moved on with her life. She's somewhere in Johnson City, near Tennessee, in T Tennessee, in a group of people in a church or some kind of, yeah, celebration or something going on there. She doesn't look like she's taking much care of herself. You can see that from her. She's changed. She's colored her hair. I don't know. Maybe she doesn't want to be recognized by the local people. We don't know if Don will be coming out anytime soon or if he's come out, but I really want to know why law enforcement in Tennessee Board of Investigation are taking so much time to charge someone, even for child negligence, child abuse, and child endangerment, because they did put these children's lives in endangerment. There's been a lot of lies in this story. We don't know what really happened to someone. We saw even the 15-year-old boy hunter splashing water at Summer and Candice telling him to stop. So I wonder if Summer hit herself somewhere by mistake and then it was too late for Summer. Um, it's just so sad. It's heartbreaking to see that it's almost two years and nothing has come up in the story. I hope this doesn't become a cold case because this little girl deserves a justice the amber alert is still issued for summer the gofundme and the reward account that came up to seventy four thousand was given back to the people we don't know what happened to the forty four thousand that the youtube creators i was one of them and the youtube viewers chipped in and put in 
I guess it goes to a charity or some kind. It goes to the church, Church Hill Foundation or something in Tennessee. I hope it just goes to a good cause and I hope we get justice for this little baby girl. It was said that some, uh, Candice was going to court on the 28th of October to get custody back of her children, but it doesn't look like she's got her children. We would have seen them around with her. So I believe that something should be coming up soon. We heard two months ago that Sheriff Ronnie Lawson, his son, has sex assault charges, trigger warning, and he was supposed to get 20 years, but he got only one year by the defense attorney. This is the same defense attorney who said he's going to He's going to try and help the TBI and all and help them with pressing charges. We haven't seen anything happening. Don, Don Wells was the one who came out with the dog trail, but it's never been confirmed by the police. He said that he believes that somebody came from the dog trail and snatched sub, uh, Summer. And Candy said that she made somebody lured her down and took her away. There hasn't been anything much going on in the case, but I really feel sorry for some of this precious baby girl needs a justice. So does Lena Sadat Keel from San Antonio, Texas, who's been missing since the 25th or 28th of December 2021. There's no new updates there either. Then we have Michael's case. We can see this is the 7th or 8th day. The police are still digging in the backyard of Michael. Wong is neighbors that live four minutes away from him, so I'm the Wanderers. And the Wanderers are both in jail. One went to jail. Stacy Wanderers went to jail in May, and Sandra Wanderers went to jail on the 15th or 14th of November. Law enforcement said that she did not report a death, and they believe it's Michael Wong. They're thoroughly checking, checking through the property so that they can do find some kind of evidence or, you, God forbid, human remains of Michael. After they're done with the uh, backyard of the property, they will be going inside the house to do a thorough check. I guess this is going to take time to resolve this case, but I really hope that Michael Wong is somewhere alive. I really pray for Brandy Neal. Michael's father, grandfather, Brandy's sister, the aunt, Brandy's children, for the community of Fruitland, Idaho, because they have been through a lot of stress. Stress. Then we have the case with baby Quentin, which much is not happening, but I checked, and they're still going through the landfill to try and find any human remains of baby Quentin. I hope Leilani, the police said she was the mother, was the person of interest so I really hope that she gets charged for whatever she did to this beautiful baby because he doesn't deserve this yes yeah, sorry guys he doesn't deserve this so baby Quentin gets his justice too and I put out the case of the Somali girl that got killed in Saskatoon, Saskatoon in uh, Canada. I hope she gets her justice because the girl that killed her, Paige Fisher, is not. Is just got bailed for five thousand after she murdered a person deliberately and stabbed her with a broken glass in her neck many times. People were standing there, acting like it was an entertainment until the poor 23-year-old girl, hold on, was in a pool of her own blood. As soon as she stood up, she fell down. She died immediately because the broken glass went through all her arteries and all the, pro all the main nerves in the neck. Then we have the case of Sean Killer Robinson, who was beaten to death by her friends in Mexico. And th that case is getting a lot of a lot of attention and awareness because this happened in Mexico but now the FBI of North Carolina Charlotte is involved so I hope we get results on those two cases too. I really hope that Candace 
decides to one day be faithful enough may god give her that power to talk and let us know where summer is that poor girl needs a justice if she's alive she would need therapy she would need a lot of tender loving care and if she's dead she would need to be buried so that her soul can rest in peace i'm just surprised at candace wells and at leilani baby quentin his mother and baby quentin his grandmother because none of them are showing empathy or remorse for these beautiful babies. I hope justice comes soon. Have a lovely weekend, guys. Stay blessed. Look after yourselves. Look after your mental health. Look after your physical health. Make sure that you stay positive. You can see there's so much madness happening in the world. Life is not promised. Life is too short. We need to look after each other. Look after our children, our family spread awareness and stay away from negativity that is the best way when we stay away from negativity automatically we start getting good thoughts positive thoughts positive emotions and po positive behaviors that's what cbt is working for but once we get into that negative pack pattern of bad thoughts negative thoughts it leads to negative emotions and negative behaviors I would advise everyone to have a learning support, learning, learning journal with them so that they can put in all their thoughts if they're depressed, if they have anxiety, if they feel good. You're not only just supposed to write your negative thoughts, write your bad days and your good days too because it helps when you go back to it that you do, that you know what part of yourself you need to work with. And the last thing we have this case that of Ger Gerald Lissick from AWP and the child abuse case. You heard Bullhorn Betty speaking so much nastiness of the cousin who is the victim. She was only a nine-year-old victim, but Bullhorn Betty had the audacity to say that the girl is grabbing a money bag. It's a money bag. That is so disrespectful for someone to attack victims we're here to protect victims to enlightening them to give them their power back to give them the confidence back their innocency and so much has been robbed of them when it's a child rape case trigger warning so people should be very mindful how we speak about victims because victims the ones that have gone may god bless their soul they have a family remaining who are watching us just like Brandy Need. Bullhorn Betty has been warned many times. She's hurting victims who are dead and alive. Molly Golightly was the one who was saying nasty things about Chris w Walter's wife. Everyone is aware of these certain characters going down to baby Quentin's house, terrorizing neighbors. That is why I have to address that and I will keep on addressing it until they leave these innocent victims alone. It is not right. When I said that I'm opening a wellness channel, I'm going to be a voice for the voiceless, I really mean it. If other YouTube creators think that they can bully, manipulate cases that are vulnerable, and just because it's public records are out there, they need to be mindful, be professional, have some empathy and remember that these parents may have not be, got the news from law enforcement before you put it out on YouTube. You have some of them saying that this is my living, the YouTube that that there's nothing wrong in doing this information because they, I just call them the trash channels. That's all I can call them because they have no self-respect. They're not respecting the victims. They're not respecting their families. And we're not here to spread hate and negativity. We are here to spread love, positive awareness, and help these victims without a voice to get their justice. You're not supposed to be friends with baby Quentin, his grandmother. We're not supposed to be enemies with them. We're supposed to mind our own business, have our boundaries, but spread the awareness. Like, put out the flyers. Say a prayer for the lost souls. Say a prayer that God may find them. We can't just go into every case like Summerhouse's case, Baby Quentin's case, 
Michael Wong's case and just attack and destroy the cases. That is not what we are supposed to be doing. We are misrepresenting the awareness programs that we are making. So guys, stay blessed. Look after yourselves. Pray for the victims. I hope AWP gets gets another way to work because those poor victims who need a closure need them. But Gerard Lissick has pointed for the whole group and Be Betty, Bullhorn Betty is saying that there's nothing wrong with him. He's just an asshole boss and bosses, asshole bosses around there. And there is no way to explain it or excuse it by saying that, Bullhorn Betty, asshole bosses are different to child rapist bosses. She needs to learn to have her ethical morals, her decency. She needs to have self-value and not attack victims and their families. That is the reason so many women and so many men who have had, who have been victims of child abuse and child rape and SO victims have difficulties coming out and talking about it because people like Betty, Andrea Bullhorn Betty puts them down. Let's encourage the victims, let's help them out to have a better life because this is seriously not their fault. A nine-year-old girl robbed of her innocence. There's nothing that we should even sit and judge and think that she's lying. It takes a lot for a person, a victim, to come out and talk about these problems. And it takes a lot for her to take him to court, so I believe 110%. Nobody should be manipulating, bullying, or doing SO offenses and crimes, especially to children. And I'm happy that Utah has an unlimited time to file in these charges. Thank you very much, guys, for your kindness, for your support. Have a blessed weekend. Stay blessed. Love you all. Bye.